Well, hello, computer nerds, electronics geeks, retro computing enthusiasts, YouTubers of all stripes with a technology bent. Welcome back to my channel. Today it's project day, and today I'm going to show you how to build a benchtop power supply using an old ATX computer power supply. And I'll tell you what, this is a dead easy project. Just about anybody can do it. It's simple, it's quick, you can be up and running with a basic version of this in 15 or 20 minutes. It's a really useful power supply um, for powering your, your electronics projects, your retro computing projects, whatever you got going on. It's a really useful power supply for that. Now like I said earlier, you can be up and running with this in 15 or 20 minutes with the basic model. But we're also going to look at a couple of optional upgrades that you can do this. Take a little more time, a little more effort, but you'll wind up with a more useful and sleeker looking power supply for your workbench. So stay tuned because we're going to dive right into this next and get to work on it. So here's all the stuff you need at a minimum to build one of these really quick in an afternoon. I mean, used to be you had to do it all yourself. You had to you know, drill holes in the case, mount the banana jacks on it, wire them in, all that good stuff. These days people are selling pre-made boards just for this. They'll plug right into the power connector that would normally go to the motherboard on an ATX computer. And that'll plug right in there. So really all you really have to do is figure out a way to mount this on there at a minimum and you've got a working benchtop power supply. So. And the way um, I do it is I just take a piece of wood and I'm going to just stick it up here with some double sided tape and I'll tell you what, I don't normally use double sided tape for structural stuff but this red stuff here, boy this stuff, you better make sure that you want things stuck together before you use this tape on them because it ain't coming off. This is, this is amazing stuff I've found. Um, you know, so I'll stick a piece of wood on here. I'll use some standoffs and some screws to mount this on here and basically you're good to go. You know, if that's that's just sort of like the minimal thing right there. You're good to go. 15 minutes work. You know, it's just like a piece of 1 by 4 cut just a little narrower than the than the power supply. I'll stick it up there. There's this this wiring harness here. That pops right off so it's not in the way anymore. Boom. Okay. Now, like I said, this is the minimal system. Now I wanted to pimp mine out a little bit. This is optional. You don't have to. Um, the connectors on here, basically you can just put a ring or a fork connector in there and that's it. Which is, you know, good enough for a lot of applications. But you know, I want a banana jacks. So on mine I got some, uh, some banana jacks and I'm going to replace all these with banana jacks. Um, it just adds a little extra difficulty to the project. You just have to take these off. Now you have to drill the holes out slightly bigger because the banana jacks I found uh, they're just a little too big to go through the existing holes but uh, you know and also you're going to drill drill out the plated through the hole part on the uh, on the board but the way this board is designed it's got the same traces on both sides so it doesn't really matter. You know it's like to deliver the massive amount of current these things can supply They've got really heavy traces going the same place on both sides of the board. So even though you're going to drill out the plate through the holes part, it's really not a big deal. It still works great. And then uh, I replaced the banana jacks. I replaced these with the banana jacks. Kind of bummed that I couldn't find any orange ones. You know, I got a kit of multicolored banana jacks here. And, uh, you know, you want, uh, well, let me get the, let me get the other one I built to show you. The actual color code, official color code, is you know blue for minus 12, yellow for plus 12, uh, red for plus 5, and orange for plus 3.3, and of course black for all the grounds. Well, unfortunately, I couldn't find any orange ones. I suppose if I really drilled down through some of the uh, electronic supply houses, I could find somebody selling some orange banana jacks, but I couldn't find any. You know, I looked around in my junk box, I found some male banana plugs, but I couldn't find any banana jacks. I'll just have to remember that the 3.3 is red instead of orange and not plug in my projects to the wrong voltage. So, you know, I like I said, I wanted to pimp out mine a little bit. 
Um, let me zoom in a little bit and I'll show you what's going on over here. So, Because now I have three different ways to connect to these. You know, I can put a ring or fork terminal on there just like with the others. Or, you know, I can plug in a banana plug. Or, I left the little tabs here sticking out that came with the banana jack. So it came on the bottom of every one. So I could put a spring clip or an alligator clip on there and clip on it and get power that way. So I got three different ways to get power out of this. Just just to make life a little easy when I need power. You know, whatever I've got, you know, that needs power, I could hook it up somehow. So, like I said, I pimp mine out a little bit. You don't have to. You can just stick with this, this minimal setup here. And you can be up and running in about 15 minutes. I will put links in the uh, in the description to where you can get this and where you can get this super sticky tape too. And of course you need an ATX power supply that goes without saying. This one's farm fresh, full of dust. I'm gonna have to uh, clean that out before I can do anything with it. So that'll be step one. And then, uh, but it does work. I've tested it. It does work. That is kind of a prerequisite. Your ATX power supply has to work. So, okay. So I just got to clean it up and then we can get started building. Okay, so I'm going to take this power supply apart just to uh, make sure I get all the dust out of it. I'll blow it out with my air compressor. And um, also I'll show you an optional um, little thing you can do if you want to. Once we're inside, uh-oh, warranty void if removed. Well, voiding warranties is one of the things I do best. Hmm. Okay. It's kind of odd screws. Finding a Phillips screwdriver that fits them. Not all that easy sometimes. Now, not all ATX power supplies are exactly alike. So, taking yours apart may be a little different. They're usually not too difficult to get into. Yeah, let me uh, break that warranty sticker. I think that's what's holding it together at the moment. Now they have a they have a little transformer bolted to the top. Yes, they've got a, a wire tie there on the cable harness. That's what's preventing it from coming apart. So let me cut that wire tie, and uh, we'll get it apart and take a closer look on the inside. Okay. There we go. So that comes off. There's that transformer bolted to the lid of the thing. That's why it wouldn't come apart. You can see it in there. Okay, so here's the main wiring harness. This is the one that needs to plug into here, okay? But you've got all these other wires coming out that went to, you know, drives and accessories and motherboard on the, uh, on the computer. Now, you don't really need these wires if you don't want them. I'm going to leave them just because they may come in useful for me. Probably not this one. Well, you never know. So I'm just going to leave them on my mods, but if you don't want these wires hanging out and you want a sleeker build, what you can do is you can just come in here and you can clip them off down here where they go under the board. Just make sure you're clipping the right wires. Don't clip any wires on this harness here. Just clip these other wires coming down. Clip them right down tight on the board so you don't have to terminate them. You don't have to worry about short circuits or anything. Just clip them off and throw them away. I'm going to keep them, but uh, this is full of dust. I'm going to take this over and uh, blow it out really good with my air compressor and get rid of all the dust in there so it's nice and clean and ready to go. Okay, that's a lot better. It's a lot cleaner on the inside. I think that'll help extend its life getting the dust off of the components because that helps prevent them from cooling in the airflow created by the fan if they're covered with a layer of dust. So I just need to put this thing back together and we can get on with the build. You know, if you've got a nice clean power supply, you don't even have to bother with this step if you don't want to cut those extra wires. 
you can just go right ahead to building. And something's preventing it. There we go. There it went back together. So I just got to put the screws back in and we can get to building. So you got some options about where to stick, you know, this thing on. It can be here, it could be here, it be pretty much, well, basically here or here. Really are your only options with this power supply because, yeah, the, the, the cable sticking out will be in the way of doing it the other way. But, you know, whichever way you want, I mean, I look at my prototype board over here, or my prototype power supply over here, I did it this way. Just because it's out of the way of everything. Um, you know, you could do it this way, but you've got these cables kind of sticking out, which I wanted to save, and they could kind of be in the way. But uh, this way, there's really nothing in the way. So that's the way I did it, and that's the way I'm going to build this one. But of course, you can do yours different, and your power supply might be different. These wires might be coming out in a different place, or you might have clipped them off. You might want the, you might want the power connector in the back, whereas I've got it on the side. So, you know, you can totally customize your benchtop power supply your way. And, of course, your particular ATX power supply may impose limits on just what you can do, too. So, all right. So, we're going to put this together just like I put this one together here. And I'll show you that next. All righty. So, we've decided we're going to mount this right here. So, that means that this has to go on here. Now this is just a piece of, uh, I think I called this uh, 1x4 earlier. I think it's actually half an inch by about 3.5 inches wide. And I cut it 5 and 3 8 inches wide. Sanded the edges, eased the corners just so there's no sharp edges or splinters. And we'll just mount that up there. And then we'll mount that on top of it with some standoffs and screws. So just decide which side you want up. Doesn't really matter. And uh, we'll put the, uh, put the double-sided tape on it, the monster double-sided tape. I think they call this stuff 3M Bull Shark tape. It is really, really just incredible stuff. I've never seen tape so sticky before. I first encountered this stuff a couple years ago, and it's like, wow! I didn't know they made double-sided tape this good. You know, usually after, you know, a few hours or a few days, it starts letting go. This stuff, no. But I'm going to put three lines on it just to make sure it's stuck down good and tight. Okay. I'm going to burnish it down really good. So it's good and stuck to the wood. Then we'll peel the backing off. And I'll tell you what, peeling the backing off, this tape sticks to everything really well, including its own backing. So getting the backing off is a bit of a job. I'll need to get a knife, which I forgot to bring over here, and peel up a corner and start it peeling, and then get it off. Let me go get a knife. Well, we'll see if this semi-dull razor knife will do the job or do I need to go find an exacto? Which exacto is what I used last time. Because it can be difficult to peel up a corner. I think I got it started. Oh that it sticks to its own backing so well. There we go. All right, that is some sticky tape, let me tell you. Get this one going. Yeah, I'll put a link to where you can buy this tape in the description of the video. Along with where you can get this. Maybe a few other things, too. Alright. So now it's just a matter of kind of lining it up where you want it. Make sure you get it. Because once it touches, it isn't coming off again. Yeah. But I'm going to uh, push it down good and tight. 
All right, so that's nice. So that's going to fit up there like that. That's going to plug in there. All right, now we need to get our standoffs and our screws and uh, put this in place. Okay, now to mount this board on here, I've just used some uh, metal standoffs, four little metal standoffs, uh, about a half inch tall. And some one inch long Panhead Phillips sheet metal screws. Now we're not going into sheet metal, but you know, it'll go into wood. Now, I'm not sure what size mounting screws this board was made to use, but number six screws were just a little tight. So I have drilled out the mounting holes just a skosh to accommodate the number six screws. Um, there's probably a metric size that would work just fine, but I don't know what that is, what it was meant for. We can just set this on here on these uh, standoffs, line them up, get them through the holes here. One more here. Put this where you want it. I just kind of like center it up and get it back away from the edge a little bit so we don't split out the wood. And then just gently run these in. You might want to finish them with just a, a hand screwdriver so you don't break anything with the torque from the screw gun. Because the screw gun can tend to over torque things sometimes. Okay, give them a little tweak with this hand screwdriver just to make sure tight. Split the wood a little bit right there, but everything else looks okay. It's on there good and tight. You plug it in. And hey, you got the basic system. If you left your cables on like I did, you might want to do something to sort of manage them a little bit, wrap them up, put a wire tie around them just to keep them from flopping all over the place. Let's plug this thing in and see if it works now. Okay, let's plug it in and see what happens. My lights flickered. That usually happens when you plug in a power supply, switching power supply, the capacitors charge up. Okay, there's a switch on top here for turning it on. Ah, look, we got a red light. I hope that's showing up. We got a red light. The fan started up. Fan's blowing. Okay, so let's measure some voltages. At 3.3, well, 3.36, pretty darn close. 5.27, you know, no load, not too bad. 11.82, positive. And over here, yeah, minus 10.97. Maybe this was not the best power supply on Earth, okay? But it did come from a working computer that got scrapped out. So, uh, but hey, this is pretty usable, I think. We still got, you know, plus 5, plus 3.3, and uh, plus 12. Not a lot of call for minus 12. Maybe running it something with an RS-232 port on it. But uh, it'll probably work. Okay, so there's your basic, your basic model power supply, okay? working up and running so like I said with mine over here that I built first I kind of pimped it out a little bit with the banana jacks all I had to do is just you know take this board back off take off all of these jacks here um, for ring terminals or fork terminals that's that's all they're really good for you can't plug anything into them um, they just bolt on take them off drill out the holes a skosh bigger just like I did for the mounting holes and then put on the banana jacks okay and another thing we didn't talk about feet 
Now that's an optional extra. Um, I like to put rubber feet on anything I build just so it doesn't mar whatever it's sitting on. Um, you can buy some rubber feet. I'll put a link in the description to some, you know, cheap rubber feet with the adhesive back that you can stick on. These feet came off of uh, an industrial printer I scrapped out. In fact, I'll put a link to that video where I scrapped out that printer. Um, they were free. I just took them off the printer, put them in a drawer, figured I needed them for something, and sure enough, along comes this project. Put another dab of that super sticky tape on top of each one and stick them on and they aren't going anywhere. No. So, uh, yep. Sometimes the best part for the job is the one that's free. So, there you go. Um, quick and easy benchtop power supply that can produce, you know, a fair amount of current for whatever projects you need in a variety of different voltages. Two different options. You got the basic model and you got the pimped out upgrade model. Take your pick, whichever one you want to build. Happy building. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this video instructive, interesting, informative, educational, inspirational. Give it, give it a thumbs up. Give it a like. And subscribe to see future videos. And uh, check out my other channel, Omega Geek 64, where I'm doing all kinds of, of precious metals recovery from scrap electronics over there. But not all of those electronics get scrapped. Sometimes they get turned into useful stuff. All right. Well, thanks again for watching. Um, subscribe to see those future videos. Press the little bell icon that YouTube makes you press to be notified when those videos come out. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Okay, can you tell them apart? This is the one we just built. This was my original example. So it's had the optional upgrades. It's got the, uh, the banana jacks. It's got the feet. It's got the wiring neatened up a little bit. Uh, but not cut off. The extra wires aren't cut off. They're just eaten up a little bit so they're out of the way. Still there in case I need to plug in like a hard drive or a floppy drive or something. You know, I even have some um, SATA to Molex connectors in case I need to plug into an old school drive for one of my retro computing projects. That could happen. So, yeah, so now I've got two of them. One for the bench in the garage and one for the bench in my office. Um, giving this the upgrade was super simple. I just had to take this board back off. I took off the old connectors that were on there. Had to drill out the holes just the tiniest bit bigger. And then bolted on the banana jacks and then put this board back on. And then of course I put on four more of my salvaged printer feet using squares of this super sticky tape. And hey, it's done. I got two identical benchtop power supplies. And it was reasonably cheap, too. Really, all I had to buy for this project were, were the two boards and the banana jacks. And I think a few screws. Yeah, a few screws. That's it. I mean, I had standoffs in my junk box. I had the wood. I had everything else I needed. So, yeah, that was pretty super simple and cheap. And I'll put links to where you can buy all of the, the bits you might need. The ATX power supplies came from scrapping out old computers. Uh, check out my other channel where I do a lot of scrapping out of old electronic equipment, Omega Geek 64. So check that one out. Uh, go there, give it a look, subscribe. Speaking of subscribing, hey, if you liked this video, if you found it at all educational, inspirational, uh, what it killed some time, whatever, give it a thumbs up, give it a like, and subscribe to see future videos. There will be more videos coming out on this channel on electronics and retro computing. So subscribe and press the little bell icon that YouTube makes you press to be notified when those new videos come out. And thanks again for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.